How are you? Good. It's nice to meet you. So, is there anything in particular I can help you with today? Okay. Right, so you've got a games night coming up. Mm hmm Right, so you just want something a bit more exciting. Some slightly different board games to the usual ones. Yeah. Yeah, that's the thing, isn't it? You end up just playing the same ones over and over. Yeah. Okay, well, you've definitely come to the right place. So, let's see if we can find you something amazing. Okay? So, what I'll do is I'll just take you through a selection of what we have. And if we manage to find something that you like, brilliant. And you're always welcome to have a look around as well. Okay. Great. Right, so let's dive right in then, shall we? So, the first one I want to show you is this. And this is a game called Topics. Okay. And it's the riotous game of rapid recall. And this is really fun and can get quite silly and competitive. And it's just great for slightly older children and up, I would say. It does say ages 14 on the box, but I think you could go younger. It just depends on the people you're playing with. Yeah. Okay, so let's just read the back. So it says, in this fun and frenetic game, everybody picks a topic and a letter. Then, against the clock, it's a frantic race to name as many examples as possible but only those beginning with your letter will count. From parts of the body that start with a T to things that are green beginning with B, the tension builds. An excellent game for players of all ages, topics simultaneously test your powers of recall and invention. And once you've created your own list, you get the chance to reveal solutions missed by other players. Okay. So it's for two players or more, and like I say, the age is 14, but kind of use your discretion, you could go younger. Yeah. So inside we have a playing board, playing cards, sun timer, two pads of paper, pencils, playing counters, and the rules. Okay, so... Take a little look inside. So here we have the playing board. Okay. And you've got the start here and the finish here. And everybody takes counter and places it on the start okay and then as you can see we've got orange and blue circles okay so there are these topics cards and this is the orange one but this comes in blue as well okay so you can pick either one, and they'll both be shuffled before you start. Okay, so you choose a colour, and then everybody gets to choose a letter to start on in the colour that matches their card. Okay, now once you've done that, everybody has to have one of these. Okay, now then, once you've picked your topic, so you have three options on here. So, say if you picked 
things at a fitness club which is the top one you would write that at the top here and then you would write your letter okay then when everyone's done that and placed their counters you would take this and turn it and everyone has the time it takes the sand to get all the way to the bottom to fill out this here with as many things of their topic beginning with their letter as they can okay now when the timer runs out wherever you've gotten to you have to draw a line and then you write your initial in this bit and you pass on your piece of paper around the circle to the next person turn the timer over again and then whichever one you have so say if it's come from your right you have to carry on the list with the same letter the same topic making sure that you don't have any of the same as the person before you okay and then at the end of everyone having a go you count up how many valid answers you have and then that determines how far you move up the board okay yeah it does seem like quite a lot of instructions doesn't it mm -hmm. but it actually is quite easy once you start playing it just takes a couple of rounds to get used to yeah, but it's really silly and it gives you the chance to be really inventive. Yeah. Mm hmm Yeah, you like it? Okay. Good. We're off to a good start. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, next up. We have possibly the silliest game I've ever played. This is called Dancing Eggs. Mm -hmm. Now for this one, you will need some space. Okay, it absolutely depends. It's up to you where you want to play it. But maybe just make sure that you move some things out of the way. Okay. says here who will be able to grasp the most eggs thus scoring the most points only the one who can firmly clasp the most eggs in the most unlikely positions will have at the end of the game a chance of winning but it is not so easy as the eggs bounce willy nilly and may also even change owners as soon as somebody drops one of their eggs the game is over and it includes nine rubber eggs, one wooden egg, two dice. Okay, and it says it's between two to four players and from ages five. So this is a bit more inclusive. Okay, now there's a picture here of a family playing this, as you can see. It looks bonkers and as you can hear the eggs are already bouncing about in the box <laughs> okay so let's open it up so inside you have nine rubber eggs that look like this you have one wooden egg okay and two dice so these have got all different instructions on which I will go through in a second and then the other one has the different body parts that you have to 
hold your egg, okay? Again, I'll go through that in a second. All right? And yes. And don't worry, it's actually not that confusing. It's just really weird. <laughs> okay, so, preparation. Get both dice ready. Place the box with the 10 eggs on the table. Keep the centre of the table clear as the eggs will be bouncing about there. Okay. Now, the precious wooden egg has mingled with the bouncing eggs. It will score two points at the end, while the bouncing eggs only score one point. Therefore, it's very popular with egg thieves. So, it says how to play. Whoever jumps the highest may start and throw the red action dice, which is this one. Okay, and it says what symbol appears on the red action dice. So, you could have, hold on, hold on, this one, which is laying an egg. You've got lots of hen luck. Shout, cluck, 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 and take an egg from the box. Okay, if it lands on this one, this is egg bouncing. Take a rubber egg from the box, hold it about half a metre above the centre of the table, let it drop. The other players try to catch the egg. Whoever catches it first, keeps it. Watch out, the wooden egg can't be used for this. Okay, so this one that's got hands on it is called egg pinching. All players try to catch the red dice as quickly as possible. Whoever catches it may take an egg from the box. This is making sense so far. <laughs> Not really, but yeah. Okay, oh, this one, okay. The egg dance. Everybody stands up and runs around the table as quickly as they can. The player who gets back to their place first gets the egg from the box. It's brilliant. We're nearly there. If you get this one, this is called the big shout. It's time to wake up the neighbours. Whoever shouts first, cock a doodle do, takes an egg from the box. Now, the last one is this one. The big hush. Now, this looks very similar to the big shout. Which I can't do. The big shout. Okay, so you have to really make sure that you look closely for these two. Okay, not a single sound may be emitted. Whoever shouts cock a doodle do has to return one of their eggs to the box. Okay, now when you have your egg, where do you place it? So when you get your egg, you have to roll the dice, and that determines where to position it. So as you see here, you could have under your chin, in your elbow, <laughs> you could have in between your legs, you could have in your neck, you could have, oh, if you get this one, you get to decide where to put it. So that's exciting. Okay, so obviously that means that everything you do, if you have to hold your egg here and then suddenly you have to do the egg dance, you have to run around the table with your egg there or in between your knees or wherever. Yeah, and then if you drop the egg, that's when egg stealing is a thing and anyone can try and steal your egg. Okay. So the aim of the game is for all for the egg box to be empty and 
the person with the most eggs wins. Alright, doesn't that sound absolutely crackers? Yeah, but it's brilliant and you will end up crying with laughter, I promise. <laughs> okay, just depends on your space though, just please don't break anything. This next game is called Who's in the Bag? Okay, now this game is quite self-explanatory really and if I'm honest, me and my family have this game and I don't think we play it by the rules not saying that you shouldn't but I think we do a much easier version slash lazier version. So, so we have a sun timer mm -hmm. and a bag. I love these bags, they're so cool. And inside these bags are loads of different cards. Okay, so before you start, make sure you give the bag a good shake. And now all you do is rummage and you start the timer and one player will have the bag and you just try and get through as many cards as you can. Okay, so, for example, I've got, so I've got three names on here. Okay, now you can just, you can do all three or you can do one. It doesn't matter, just keep going and try and get through as many as you can. Okay, so, for example, I've got one here and you just have to describe who the person is. So... She was in the Garden of Eden with Adam. Eve, exactly. Or you could have... Um, he had six wives, divorced, beheaded, died, divorced, beheaded, survived. King Henry VIII, exactly. Mm -hmm. And you just keep going now. I'm not sure that is the proper way to play this game. I think you can maybe play it in a bit more of a keen way if you wanted. But I have this with my family and it's just quicker, easier. And yeah, just if you just need a quick game in between courses or something like that, this is this is perfect. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, this is ages eight and up. Yeah. Uh, again, you could go younger maybe, but you would maybe just need to help younger children just in case they didn't know most of the names. Yeah. Okay. Brilliant. Okay. So... I am just going to show you one more uh, full size game and then I've just got two travel size games that I want to show you just in case you've got any long journeys coming up. Okay? So, this game is called The Unbelievable Truth and it's based on a radio show on the BBC. Okay, so if you're familiar with it, brilliant. If not, it's fine. So, it says, The game where the truths are as unbelievable as the lies. Players take it in turns to try to smuggle unbelievable truths 
past their opponents in a series of lecture and quick fire rounds, with subjects as diverse as armadillos and Sir Walter Raleigh, you have only a few seconds to decide whether a truth is fact or fiction. If you think you have spotted a qu truth and you're quickest off the mark to ring the bell, you could win a point or lose one. Can you win this hugely entertaining and often hilarious game? So, this is, it says it's suitable for 18 and over just because it does contain adult content. Okay, but again, use your discretion, okay? And it has to be three or more players. All right, but to be honest, I think that 18 or plus is kind of right. Um, but you could maybe go 16, but I'm not gonna actually recommend that to you because I will lose my job. <laughs> So, inside, we have this bell. Mm -hmm. If a game has a bell, it's won me over. <laughs> I love it, I love it. Okay. And it also has these point tokens and one side is a plus and one side is a minus. So what happens is if it becomes, if you get it as a plus and it becomes a minus you just flip it over. Yeah. a quick look at the instructions. So, the youngest player goes first. Player one picks a card from the top of the lecture pack and reads out the name of the category to the other players, followed by the lecture on the card. The players should take their time to deliver the lecture, intonating and pausing for effect. As the player delivers the lecture, all the other players must try to spot the true statements in among the lies. Most of the statements on the lecture cards are false. The true statements are all highlighted in bold, so they'll be like that. If a player believes a particular statement is true, they should attempt to ring the bell before any other player. Once the bell is rung, that player must identify which statement they believe to be true and this will then be confirmed or refuted by player one. If the statement is true, the player who guessed correctly receives one point token from the box. If the statement turns out to be false, the guessing player loses a point. If the player doesn't have any point tokens, they receive a minus point. So that's when you would turn it over, okay? All right, and then basically player one resumes their delivery of the lecture and if they've had the amount of truths that they've managed to smuggle past, that's the amount of points that they get. Okay? Yeah, exactly. So, let me just read an example to you. Okay, so, this one is about mice, okay? So remember that most of this will be false and only a handful of these will be true. Okay, three to be specific, I think. Oh no, it can be any amount, it can be any amount. Okay, mice. In the UK, we have the expression, it's raining cats and dogs. So that would be true. Mm -hmm. In Austria, they say instead that it's raining cats and mice, but in Norway, they say that it's raining mice and fish. In the Arctic, mice and cream is a speciality dish. Visitors delight in referring to it as mice cream 
as if nobody had ever thought of that joke before. Mouse is the only word ending in mouse whose plural ends in ice. Following a trip to Canada in 1781, Robert Burns wrote his Ode to a Moose, meaning elk. His English publisher mistakenly made allowance for his accent and corrected the spelling to mouse. This is why the poem doesn't seem to make any sense. John Steinbeck's dog ate the first draft of his novel, Of Mice and Men. Okay, so the true ones here were in Norway they say it's raining mice and fish and in the Arctic mice and cream is a speciality dish and also John Steinbeck's dog ate the first draft of Of Mice and Men. There you go. So if you were to get any of those, you would get a point. Yeah. And the winner is just the person with the most points at the end. Okay. So I do think that that game is slightly more intellectual. Um, I mean, it's not because it is very silly. Um, but just because it's a lot of reading and stuff like that it just is a bit older so it depends the kind of ages you're looking for yeah maybe another time yeah mm -hmm. yeah it does sound good doesn't it it is really fun but you do have to be in the right mood for it don't do this when you're tired <laughs> Two more games left to show you, and it's these two here. Okay, so these are a perfect size for taking on a train journey, or a car journey, or just having in the hotel instead of packing a big one, anything like that. Yeah, so this one is called Randomize. And you can draw, act, or describe your way to victory. Okay, so it's kind of a mixture of charades, Pictionary, and who's in the bag, really. Yeah, so let me just show you a quick example. I think this is pretty self-explanatory, but I'll just show you. So, where is it? Where is it? Here we go. So, you can choose either easy or hard, and you have three to choose from. Okay, and so you could act, draw, or describe any of these. Okay. So, if you found it easier to draw a princess than describe one or act it out, then you would do that, okay? Mm. Yeah, so like I say, relatively self-explanatory. Yeah. And then this one is called Soundiculus. And this is hilarious. So... You get these cards here, and there's three types to choose from. So this is hard, but there's also a medium and an easy, okay? And you get two to choose from, and you can't use your body or hands or face at all. You just have to make the sound using your voice, okay? So here you have the option of a brew or ice hockey. And you can only use your voice to make those sounds. And it's absolutely hysterical um, and super hard. <laughs> but yeah, so they're just two games that I thought I would just show you just as something 
to kind of take away with you so it doesn't always have to be on the iPad or whatever. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Okay, so what are you thinking? Has anything caught your eye? Who's in the bag? Amazing. Dancing eggs. Yes, I'm so happy about that one. <laughs> and, and you'll take a travel game as well. Perfect. All right, well, if you want to go and have a look around, see if there's anything else, and I will get those sorted for you, and I'll meet you at the desk in a second. Okay, brilliant.